amazing how many hypocrites will be celebrating this pagan holiday, Good Friday, that have never had an experience, never met Jesus, never been born again, Why do they even bother to gather together? What is the purpose? Why do folks gather together and they say they're doing it? They say they're doing it because they're religious. I mean, all the rest of the year, they have nothing to do with Jesus. But one time a year, they all go to church. Amazing. And it's not about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's not about even the death of Jesus Christ. It has to do with a pagan holiday. Easter is not about the resurrection. It's a pagan holiday. John chapter 8, verse 24. Jesus said, I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Doesn't matter what religious activity you do. Doesn't matter if you do any re religious activity. Jesus didn't say just because you go to church or because you do some religious function that you're going to be saved. He said, you must believe. Believe what? Believe that he is God. What does the scripture say about those that deny that Jesus is the Son of God? That, that deny that the word was made flesh? They are of the Antichrist spirit. Jesus said, if you don't believe I am he, you shall die in your sins. What's he talking about? I am he. Let's take a look at some scriptures in the Old Testament, see what Jesus is talking about. Let's look at Isaiah. Chapter 41, verse 4. The Lord is speaking, and he says, Who hath wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, the first and with the last, I am he. I am he. Jesus said, if you don't believe, I am he. You will die in your sins. 
Let's look at another verse. Isaiah 43, verse 10. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me, there is no Savior. So when you hear Jesus saying, if you don't believe that I'm He, you're going to die in your sins. He's saying, if you don't believe I'm the Lord, I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me there is no Savior. Hallelujah. Praise God. He says, I have declared and have saved. I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, you are are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. That I am God. Hallelujah. Those that will be gathering together for their pagan holiday, they don't believe that He is God. They don't believe that He's the Lord. Are you listening to me? Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon, and have brought down all their nobles, and the Chaldeans, whose cry is in the ships. Hallelujah. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Now how far do the Jews need to go then to put these scriptures together where Jesus says in the New Testament, I am He. Why can't they put those two together? Jesus said, if you don't believe I am he, you will die in your sins. It's pretty plain. Now there's another place where Jesus says, I am he. How many know that? Jesus said that in the New Testament more than once. When they came to arrest him, do you remember what Jesus said? When, when Jesus said, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And what was it that Jesus said? He said, I am he. Praise God. And they fell back under the power of God, people. Isn't that what the scripture says? The soldiers that came to arrest Jesus fell backwards under the power of God, when they came to arrest Jesus, Jesus said, Whom do you seek? Do you really know who I am? They said, 
We're coming to get Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said, I am he. Now you put that together with the Old Testament scriptures when the Lord says, I am he. And besides me, there is no God. There is, has never been a God formed beside me. If you can't take the Old Testament and the New Testament and put those together and see that Jesus Christ is the Lord, the Creator, that He is the one that said to Moses, I am that I am. Amen. He's the Lord. He's the Lord, folks. And if we don't believe that He is the Lord, that He is God, the Holy One, if we don't believe that, we're going to die in our sins. Because only Jesus, the Lord, God can save. Amen. That's what he says. He says, I'm the Savior. And this is in the Old Testament. I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me, there is no Savior. I remember one time I looked at the scripture in the Old Testament where the Lord says, I am He. And then I went to the New Testament and, and I put them together and I was looking at those together and the Holy Ghost took those two verses and He just brought them together and gave me a revelation. I will tell you people, when the Lord gives you a revelation that Jesus Christ is God, that the Word became flesh, it will change your life. He's not just a man. He's not just a good man. He's not just a prophet. Amen? He's not just one of the many that have come and gone. He is the eternal Son of God. Amen? with no beginning and no ending, and He is the beginning and He is the ending. He is the first and He is the last. He's the Lord. Amen. Before the world was even created, before the earth was created, before Adam, before Abraham, Jesus said, I am. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Before Adam, I am. Amen. But I like this where they came to seek Jesus in the garden. You would have thought that that would have got their attention as they fell backwards under the power of God. Amen. You, you would think that would have got their attention. Let's listen to the verses here. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kedron, where was a garden into which he entered in his disciples. Now, the world's getting ready to worship, or not worship, but getting ready to come together for what they call Good Friday. And that's what we're speaking of right now. This has to do with Good Friday for what, what they call Good Friday. Because this has to do with when they came to arrest Jesus and take him to, the, to be crucified. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. 
Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, he went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. Listen, folks. As soon then as they had said unto them, as soon as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Are you listening? And he asked them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way. Now we've been dealing with this thought in the scripture having to do with God's love and how it protects, it preserves. And here we see the Lord protecting the disciples. He's holding the soldiers back. Amen? Under the power of God. He's holding them there. He's got them arrested. Because if he didn't, they'd already be on top of the disciples. And Jesus says, let these go their way. I'll release you. I'll let you go. And I'll let you arrest me. But let these go their way. But he was letting them know, you're not going to take me against my will. No man took his life. He gave his life. No man took his life, folks. Jesus Christ gave his life. He laid down his life. He could have stopped them. He said, I could have called the angels and they would have delivered me. But that's not what he came to do. He didn't come to not do the will of the Father. He came to to do the will of the Father. And the will of the Father was to give his life for the world. Amen? That whosoever would believe on him would be saved. Now just because all these folks are going to get together and do their religious thing and go right back into their wicked and their evil, sinful, hypocritical lives means nothing to God. You think about all these hypocrites gathering together. It's a wonder the Lord doesn't just catch them in his bug catcher, as it were. You know, just, just, it's, it's a wonder. The, the mercy of God, the long suffering of God, as they gather together in their hypocritical, ways they don't have any any love in their hearts for Jesus and they're going to go into these houses these buildings and supposedly they're going to honor Jesus no they're going there for their conscience sake so they can say they went. Most of them go because the mom and dad wants them to go or the, the, someone in the family wants them to go. But they've never been they've never been to the cross. They've never experienced Calvary. They don't know anything about the blood. The life that's in the blood of Jesus. 
They don't know what it is to be born again. And they're just going through a ritual, a ceremony. But that's not what the cross and the resurrection is about. Jesus said, Besides me, there is no Savior. And if you don't believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. You will die in your sins if you don't believe that I am He. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Son of God. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. I am He. He's holding them under the power of God. He asks them again, Whom do you seek? Can you imagine? Here He is holding them under His power. They can't move. And they're so stubborn. And they're so rebellious and just so full of arrogance and full of the devil that they can't even wake up to realize that God Almighty has arrested them. They came to arrest Jesus and Jesus arrested them. Oh, praise His wonderful name. No man took His life. Amen. Can you just hear the words of Jesus to Judas? You're going to betray me with a kiss, Judas? Betray me with a kiss? He's God, people. He's God. He is God. The Lord did everything he could to reach Judas. Willing that none should perish. Folks, I'm going to tell you this is a Judas generation. It's not just one Judas. There are many Judases. Many Antichrists. Whole generation of Antichrists today. And they gathered together for what they call Good Friday. The Catholic Church calls that Good Friday. They shut down the stock market. They shut down the, the Washington, the government, for their pagan holiday. For their pagan rituals. Has nothing to do with who says I am he. Has nothing to do with him. And they're going to die in their sins. They're going to die in their sins. They're already dead spiritually. But they're going to die in their sin. And they're going to spend eternity in hell. All because... They would not believe. Even Jesus said, He said, you know who I am. They know. They do know who He is. I am convinced that the world knows that Jesus is God. But they don't care. They don't care. They hate Him. They're blinded by the God of this world. I can't tell you that I knew God as the Lord. I can't tell you that I knew Him. 
But I knew I didn't want I didn't want anything to do with them for I was saved. I knew that. I knew I didn't want anything to do with anything that had to do with being holy or righteous or good. The scripture says they're condemned because they won't come to the light. Folks, we've got to convince this generation before it's too late. The king is coming. The Lord is coming. The end is coming. Are you listening? He's not coming as a lowly Nazarene. He's not coming. As he did the first time. No, 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 no. He's coming in power and great glory. He's coming in the clouds. He's coming, amen, at the right hand of the Father in power. Oh, praise God. The revelation of Jesus Christ is at hand, people. Are you listening to me? The appearing of Christ, the appearing of Jesus. He gave him an opportunity. He gave people the chance to repent. He gave them a chance to repent. He gave us all an opportunity to repent. We cannot say the Lord didn't give us an opportunity to repent. And those that are going to go through the great tribulation, they're going to have much more time to repent. The scripture says, in all of this, boils on their bodies, gnawing their tongues for pain, they did not repent of their sins, of their sorceries. Oh, we better wake up, people. We've got people that we've got to reach for Jesus. God bless you.